I'm going to invite the McKeevers up, Dave and Kay. They're part of our pastoral team, and they're going to speak a word. Come on, you know you love these guys. They're going to speak a... Let me turn that on for you, David. They're going to speak a word of blessing over our giving today and believe God for blessings. Give them one more hand as they come. These are laborers of the Lord. Hey, good morning, Word Alive. Uh, before, I, before I get started, I'm not a very good speaker, and I, I probably sound like a clampet. But uh, no offense to the clampets, because Dan's probably kin to them. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're the McKeevers. I'm David, and this is my beautiful wife, Kay. We've been married 42 years. We have, uh, we have two, two beautiful daughters, two fantastic son-in-laws. We have grandsons and granddaughters. And one of them, one of my granddaughters is going to have a baby. So we're, uh, we're really a blessed family. But uh, talking about giving is going to be easy for us because we've been on the receiving end before. So uh, I'm going to let Kay tell the story. And uh, we just thank you all. Good morning. Isn't it interesting how the Lord orchestrates things? Because I was going to talk about trusting in the Lord. Mm. <laughs> Isn't it good? Yeah. We're going to go back to the beginning of when David and I first started trusting in the Lord with our finances. Now, it's been over 30 years ago. I know you can't believe I'm that old, but it's true. <laughs> but I was in my kitchen. It was shortly after David was unable to start working. He had to stop working. And I was working at a big box retail store making a big $3.70 an hour. Had a family of four. I'm in my kitchen. I'm cooking the last of our food. And I'm in there praying. I'm at the stove, and I'm stirring it up, and I'm saying, Lord, you've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. As I'm praying, I'm crying. I'm, I'm confident in the same time I'm crying that the Lord's going to hear my prayer. Well, it wasn't long did this white truck come pulled up in our yard and a man come out from the church we were going to. Never been to our house before. Now, we were at a Baptist church. I love them. They, they put the word in you, don't they? But this man said, I was down here close to y'all and the Lord said, go ask the McKeevers what they need. You know what we did? Full of pride, we said, we don't need anything. I had just applied for food stamps. I thought, well, that's my answer, right? I'll get food stamps any day. And he said very boldly, don't make me look in your cabinets because I will. <laughs> so then I said, well, we might need some groceries. He said, well, I'll have $100 to you tomorrow. So... True to his word, he, he brought in $100 the next day. Dave and I was elated. We took that $10 tithe out of that $100. We spent every penny we could on groceries. We were good to go, right? God had answered our prayers. But God is Elohim. He's the God of more than enough. And he knew it wasn't just groceries we needed. We needed a testimony of his faithfulness and trustworthiness. So we went to church that Sunday, came home, and I cooked some dinner because I had groceries. And this same truck comes pulling up again. Well, he had two sons that played football, and they worked out. They were big um, twins, and they, they had arms. Well, they come in toting boxes, boxes after box after box after box. And David, before he had gotten sick, had built shelves, and they were 10, 12 feet long stacked up on two or three, those boxes filled with canned goods and pudding mixes and cake mixes, because we had children, um, canned goods, macaroni and cheese, anything you can think of, filled up those shelves. Not only that, we had a freezer, a deep freeze that was empty. It just about filled that freezer up. <laughs> but that ain't all. Oh, no, they're on. Wait, wait, there's more. So then he gave me an envelope, well, gave us an envelope, and it had $1,000 in it. Now, we had just paid $10 ties. That's a good return, right? But let me tell you something. 
we had written bad checks. I know none of you good people have ever done anything like that. <laughs> but we had. So we couldn't have a bank account. So that went into the bank account of the underwear drawer. <laughs> and every time we needed something to be paid or needed something, we would reach in there and it was there. Every time we needed something, it was on those shelves and we was able to feed our family. Now we bought things along the way, but every time we had a genuine need, it was there. And it lasted for a year, a whole year, until we got on our feet and we was able to get some extra income in to bring the stability. Now let me tell you, God is trustworthy. That, um, that psalm that I prayed is Psalm 38. He has never seen his seed begging bread. And I, I mean, 37, Psalm 37. As I was thinking about this, there are so many people right now worried about what's going to happen. Is there a famine coming? Can I afford to give? You can't afford not to give. Let me tell you something. Give, and it will be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over will, will men bring to your bosom. Psalm 37, 18 and 19 says, The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil, in the evil time, and in the days of famine they will be satisfied. So don't put your trust in the bank account. Don't put your trust in horses. Trust in the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen.